Therapy. Modeling practice, joystick. Uh, nice quick model practice here for us. Uh, so yeah. all the other stuff is turned off. I've got a new mesh, and I'm going to add a cylinder to my zero space here. Uh, my, my center, world center. Um, so you can just mm -hmm. click. I'm holding control to get a nice um, even cylinder. And then I'm going to make sure my axis is set to Y. And I think my sides, I'll go ahead and set to 20. So let's go ahead and turn everything off. Yep. So then I'm just going to drag this up to the where it's sitting on the ground. I'll like so. Okay. And I'm not trying to make this thing huge, right? I can turn on my dimensions and see that it's like 50 millimeters. That's fine. I'm not going super to scale on anything, but like I don't want it to be like one meter or two meters or whatever. Um, something decent. Um, and so if we're looking at our joystick that we want to create, this one here, like the main shape for all of this is basically just a cylinder. So we got like a mushroom cap, and then we got like a big fat cylinder, and then we got like a um, like a mounting racket or whatever. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can tackle the mushroom cap first. That'll be super simple, right? So we've got like our short squat little cylinder here. I'm just going to take this and hit, uh, select that top polygon, hit B, bevel it out, and then I'm going to hit shift and click in the viewport and then drag it up until I'm like roughly happy with it. And then um, you could stop here, but I like to go one more, so I'll hit shift and click and then I drag this so it's nice and tiny. It doesn't have to be like super small, but just, just tiny. Um, so it's not in the way when we go to bevel this edge. Uh, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to harden both of these edges using the Ateria weight tools. Um, so if we sub D this, we've got like a hard edge down here. And then uh, I'm going to take this bottom polygon. I'm just going to cut it off, uh, hit a new mesh, and paste it on that new mesh so that we've got a, a second mesh down there. Um, so with that done, I'm going to hit B again, and I'm just going to bevel it out. Uh, and then delete it. Delete that big polygon that was there. So now you've got something that looks kind of like this. All right, so strip just polygons here and strip a, and a mushroom cap. So I beveled that. You don't have to bevel it, but I'd recommend it because oh, okay. scaling it's going to be. Oh, so you get the geometry with it. Yeah, yeah. So B, bevel it out, and it'll. It's doing some weird stretching stuff because that giant polygon's also covering it. So with that beveled out, you can hit delete now. Once you drop your bevel, so drop your bevel, hit delete, and now you've just you're left with these nice quads to work with. Oh, okay. Right. So now we've just got a nice strip of quads out here. We can go back to the mushroom cap, though, um, and select this top edge. Hit B for bevel, drag it down, add some edge loops, and make it uh, roughly match your reference. I think that's probably pretty good. Okay. I'm going to drop that. I'm going to select this middle polygon here. And then with that selected, I'm going to hit Alt 2. To select the edges and then I'm gonna on my mighty mouse kit I'm gonna hit collapse uh, you can find it wherever but it's uh, shift 4 on my mighty mouse kit set that up on yeah it is also on the uh, the worksheet here it's this one here that looks like all the points are collapsed ah, got it okay so uh, while we're here we might as well select every other line on this triangular mess like uh, so, and then delete them. And now we've got all quads. It, it won't pattern select that, will it? It will not pattern select it, no. Because uh, because there's that vertice in the middle that everything has gone to. Yeah. All right. Cool. So now we can work on this bottom piece here, um, and basically it looks like from our reference, we've got that like large 
like ring there uh, that's like up looks like maybe a guide or something a guard or whatever um, we'll handle that last the first thing that we want to tackle is like the flat area with the little with the four uh, mounting holes and the screw in there so okay. we'll handle that next um, so I'm going to take like two polygons like this um, pretty much anywhere you can select these two or, or you can even pick all three if you want it that's fine um, and then I'm just gonna hold control and shift and my I have move activated with W so then control shift I'm gonna drag this out like that so I get a nice duplicate Control. Oh uh, yeah. Control. Uh, w and then control shift. Got it. Yeah. Make sure you're selecting that green circle because that'll make it easy to just slide it on one plane. There you go. And I just slid it directly out, um, so it's still mm -hmm. pretty close to where it was, like as far as on the the X and Z axis. It's like okay. pretty close. Uh, so then I'm gonna hit radial. Make it radial. That menu there, yep. Click in the viewport. Oh, there you go. Um, oh, mine did weird. Now nah, it's fine. Uh, go ahead and drop the tool and hit B for bevel, and then bevel it in. So we're creating that hole for the uh, the geometry now, and then uh, with that inner piece selected, we can just cut that to a new mesh, and then ignore the the mesh shop window. I'll go ahead and name that hex bolt. Oh, is it because mine's there? Okay. So uh, cut cut to new mesh. Yep, cut that out to new mesh. Ignore the mesh name up mesh up bolt. that pops up, um, and name it hex bolt. Yep. And then I'm just gonna bevel that up, give it some height, and then shift bevel again. Pull it in a little bit, shift bevel again, pull it in, shift bevel again, pull it down, and in. And now it looks like that. All right. So that's cool. Uh, so if we wanted, we could, um, technically this is not a hex bolt, um, because it's not the right sides, the right number of sides. Uh, Hold on real quick. Um, sorry, Ryan. Um, that was cool. My keyboard just crashed. Oh no. Yeah. I'm just gonna play for a second. Okay. Go back. Cool. Uh, so technically this is not a hex bolt, and I would like it to be. Um, and I'm just realizing that because we used two polygon or three polygons on when we duplicated this off instead of two, it's different than mm -hmm. my first workflow. Um, so oh, it's not eight. Yeah. Okay, it's so, not a big deal. So it's technically eight, um, but I mean it's pretty easy to fix. We can uh, just select two of the polygons, cut them off, select the rest, um, delete them, and then paste our our two, and then radial that. Um, and then if we wanted to recenter this hex here, we could just select this so, uh, edge loop, hit work plane, select these polygons again, and then do uh, center all, and it'll put them directly in the middle. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm just going to... Just delete the other thing? No, I don't even need to delete the outer piece. I'm just going to use this for my bolt. Um, I'll oh, okay. B and bring this up. Technically, we could delete that inner one if we wanted to fit real nice, but I mean, it's gonna be fine either way. I feel like it's just less polygons in the in model, which is fine. Um, but I beveled that up, and then I'm gonna bevel it in, and then I'm gonna hit Shift and click in again and bevel it down, and shrink it in just a little bit, so it's like this. And now then, mine's a little bit off center. Is that okay? That's yeah, okay, right? Yeah, that's fine. Um, we'll we'll we can adjust that to our heart's content once we kind of get it all finished up. That'll be one of the final steps in the model. Um, but with this, with these inner two pieces selected, I'm gonna set my edge weights to 90, and then I'm gonna select these inner pieces around 
set those to 90, and then I'm gonna select the two outer rings of polygons, and you guessed it, set those to 90. So now if we hit uh, our tab for our sub D mode, you'll see we've got a nice hex bolt here. Um, and if we wanted, we could put like a, uh, put a bubble on this edge. Like so, and it just looks real nice. Right. Anyway, so that's the hex bolt. Pretty easy. over here and I want you to do it see if you've got any questions. Oh, the uh, Terra weight um, bar, which one is that? I always use Control w but... You can use Control w that's fine. I'm just using uh, Shift-12 on my mouse. That's from the Mighty, Mighty Mouse Kit. Shift. By the way, do you mind if I put this on YouTube? This like a little mind no. practice? No, dude. Cool. I'll stop cursing. So, um, wait, we have a thing for a Terra. I love those Terra scripts, they're real nice. Uh, so should I delete that one? Now you have that line. Yeah, I've got it. I just shrunk my inner hex bolt in a little bit. Uh, you don't have to select that middle line to, to make it hard can select just the so what I did is I selected these two polygons so I'm not selecting each individual inner line it saves time right and then you make that a hard edge with just the two oh polygons. you sorry you can just do the whole mm -hmm. oh I could do that for these as well then right uh no because well yes if you did every other one like this then yes you'd have to do it like this and then you could do it again like this to get all of the edges um, because you want this top edge and you want these inner edges. So in order to get those, you've got to kind of finagle it just a little bit or select okay. them. Uh, so I just use pattern select. I select one, two, and then I use uh, up on the mouse tilt or up on the, the arrow, the keyboard arrows. Cool. Uh, so let me give that a 90. Yep. So give it to that outer edge. Oh right. So double click it. Yep. Hit it with that ninety. And then double that last edge. Just one edge level. Like so. Yep. I'm getting a sh is that a shading error? What's going on there? Yeah, it does look like a shading error, doesn't it? Hmm. Mesh uh, cleanup? You could try mesh cleanup. I don't know if it'll work. Do unsub unsub D it and let's see what your mesh looks like. Let's just hit tab. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. You can Oh, I'm doing I'm not doing tab, I do shift tab, Catmull Clark, is that make any difference? Maybe. I think I have Tabby Cat installed, uh, so I think it acts like that in general. Oh. That's a problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that looks a little gross. That's uh, Tab. Mine's and not the same. Shift Tab is... Like that. Hmm. Uh, do you have... Are these edges hard? For yours, these ones that I've got selected right now, because they shouldn't be. I don't believe so. I didn't intentionally do it. If I did, let me see. Um. So you could turn on weight values. Oh. Okay. Uh, actually, that doesn't seem to be showing me what I want. So it probably won't show it for you either. Doesn't the kit have a show weight value? It does. Show on but yeah. it doesn't look like it's actually showing the weight values for that, unfortunately, so I don't know. 
Also, look at this faceting right here. Oh, yours is doing that too. That's fine. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, I mean, you All can right, try wow. and grab it and just scale it out a little bit more. Yeah, so, like, look, if I scale it out too far, you can see it does the same for me. So maybe scale it uh, down a bit. Okay. Yeah, right about midway is like where you don't want to pass. You want to be within mid range. Just do the edge, don't do the polygons. Oh, at the top here? Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. So now works. just now just grab those inner polygons and shrink those down so you get a nice taper. Cause that'll be better for a normal map if you decide to like bake this out. Give it a nice taper. Make it look good. Nice. Yeah, yeah, like that. That'll be a good normal map detail, right? Okay. Uh, cool. So we got the little hex bolt. I'm gonna go ahead and save because I've crashed before using mesh shops. <laughs> You will crash again. And then I'm just gonna go back to the um, the base here, select it in item mode, and we can start working on it again. Okay. Oh, um, let me shrink this guy out. I'll just... I'll I just leave it for now. It's fine. Uh, we'll we'll like I said, we'll do the final adjustments at the end. Like okay. make it all look good. Um, so I've selected the base again. Um, and then I'm going to go into polygon mode and select this ring that's going to hold our hex bolt. And mm -hmm. I want to rotate it just so that it lines up nicely with the, um, the ring. Oh, okay, so those geometries can join up. Yeah. And then I think I'm going to actually shrink this ring, the outer ring, down just a little bit so it's got a little more room to breathe between those polygons. But then okay. I'm going to bridge that. Um, and then I can select the whole loop. Like, if I want a nice, easy way to do this, I can just double click and select this whole outer loop here. And then click and drag, get rid of these polygons. And I'll get rid of the two um, that are closest to the bridge geometry. So I've got the outer ring here. You can also just get it by selecting like one, two, and then growing it around until you get to there. Okay. So I'm just leaving these three that are close to the bridge blank for now. Okay. Um, and then I will hit. I'll wait for you to catch up. I'm gonna hit Z. And I'm gonna click in the viewport, switch over to scale mode on R, and scale that out. And I'm just trying to scale it so that it's like roughly lined up with where it would fall in line with this if I when I bridge this, because that's what mm -hmm. I'm gonna do next. Oh, no. Um, oh, delete those two polys first? No, you you were scaling instead of... Um, you you oh. didn't hit Z, you didn't extend. You were just scaling. So, yep. Z to, to first extend, and then R. Switch over to R. Uh, is that R? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, open up your properties. Uh, I can't see your properties. Are they open? Hold on. Okay. There you go. Oh. Cool. Yeah, extend yeah. those out to where they'll they'll kind of meet up with that, and then we'll select these two and bridge them, and then we'll select these two and bridge them. So now we've got it looking like this. Cool. Uh. So now, with that done, what I'm actually going to do... Is this? We could do it one more time, actually. I think, I think let's do that, that, same, that same step one more time. So we select all the way around, except for the three that are close. I think this got messed up. I think you're just on two different subdivisions. I think you're on capital oh, okay. on one, and you're on sub-D. Or you're on regular polygon on one, and you're on sub-D on the other. Uh, this is why I like Tabby Cat, is because you can 
fix that in a GIF. But basically, just select your polygons that are around the hex ring, select it in a loop, loop it, and then hit tab. There you go. Okay, are you happy? Yeah, that should be fine. Okay. Um, so now we're going to do the same step again, where we like s loop select around. Okay. We leave one on either side of our bridge geometry. Hit Z, click in the viewport, hit R, scale it out. And then we'll select these two, bridge, and select these two, and bridge. Basically, trying to line it up with the next vertice. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be perfect. It can just be you okay. know, close. We're not going for perfection. Nice. Okay. Cool. So then we uh, we've got this geometry set up pretty well. Um, if we hit tab on it, like it smooths out pretty well, looks nice. Um, so we can mirror this around, and then we can mirror our hex bolts around. So I'm going to select the polygons. I'm going to make sure my work plane is off first, because it was on earlier. Um, looks like yours is uh, off, so you're fine. Um, but I'm going to select the polygons on either side of the Z. Mm -hmm. This and delete them, and then select that half and delete it. And then I'm going to select on the opposite side of the Y or the X and delete it. Double click and delete those. So I'm just left with this corner detail, and that's what we want. Um, okay. So with that done, we can add we can add a mesh shop mirror. Wait, wait, wait. I noticed that your edges. Do you have those weighted? No. But I'm I'm in a different type of sub D than you are. Hit Shift Tab. Oh, okay, okay. Because my I'm on I use the Tabby Cat plugin where you oh, okay. do not. So hit Shift Tab again. Is it not working? Maybe it's Control Tab. I don't know what. Oh, that there, is. there you go. There it is. Shift what, Tab. What was it? Shift Tab. Shift Tab. Cool. So yeah, now yours look like mine. And like I said, that I really like the Tabby Cat plugin. It, it's great for this sort of stuff. And like, it's got the nice built-in. Where if you double tap tab, then it like makes sure all of your mesh islands are the same, uh, in the same polygon, like type. Oh. Okay. So I'd recommend looking into it, but it uh, you know it's free. Um, okay. But with that done, I'm gonna add first. I'm gonna rename this, this to joystick. Um. Mounting. Check. Sure. Fix this weird end gun I have right here. I don't know how that happened. Yes. Okay. Un undo your sub D, and then you can look and see where it actually needs to go. So when you're when you're sub D'd like that, it can be hard to to figure out. I'm thinking it's just this polygon here. Oh my god, this got awful. I don't even know how it happened. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, that's a control Z. Right. Okay. Well, all you have to do, all you have to do is drag. Like, it looks like it's... Where is it? Okay, so you've got like an extra... You've got like an extra edge in there, it looks like. You've got this one and this one, and then you're missing... That's strange. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what you did there. Um, how big is that polygon? Select like just that one polygon, that end gone. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to lay this line in first. So from here to here, and then you need to lay this line in. So go from here. To here, and it's slightly different than what I've got on my screen, but it should be the same 
the same movement. So go from the inner one to the outer one. Like that. Yep, there you go. And then you could take that outer uh, vertex and you could slide it with S to like slide it out and get it to where it's roughly creating that circular like that that circular shape that we're looking for. S, not not move S. Cuz it'll move it along the normal There you go. Let's move it out like that. And then you know you're going in the right direction. Because you just be up that one. Pull it out. Cool. Yeah, so I'm I'm not hundred percent sure how you how you got there because Now I've got an extra row. Yeah, now you have an extra row. So um, should I go I can But so how many I'm I'm curious. It's okay. We can keep going. Like it's not gonna it's not gonna be a big deal either way. But I'm curious if you select this inner circle, how many polygons you've got. Like go all the way around it. How many 24? polygons? Twenty four. Yeah, I have twenty. That's why. Oh, okay, okay. Uh -huh. Not a big deal. Not not huge. It's fine. Um, but that's why. Okay. Uh, anyway. So now I'm going to select this base plate again, and I've renamed it Joystick Mounting Plate. You can go ahead and do that if you want. But with that done, I'm going to add a mirror mesh op to this. And I'm going to make sure that Merge Vertices is on, and I up the distance until they merge together nicely. Seems like my circle might be slightly off center, um, which is not great, but workable. need to cut this to a new mesh, I think, right? Yeah, you might have to. So then, um, run a mirror off on this? Yep. Um. So on my kit, you could also hold Alt and just click the mirror up on the thing there. Um, oh, right. If you didn't have my kit, you'd have to go through the mesh ops. No, you, we set this up. Yeah. Uh, Alt, uh... Then click the mirror. Yep, the red one. There you go. And then go ahead and click it. Or actually, so with that, you'll want to make sure that merge vertices is on. And if you need to up your distance to merge those vertices, you might have to do that. Here's to me. Yeah. Merging nicely. Cool. So now we'll add another one. And this time, instead of it being the default of X, we're going to make it Z. And then we also need to make sure that Merge Verts is on. And that that's brought up if it needs to be. That distance. So yeah, what this is showing me is that my joystick in the middle is not center. So, uh, after those mirrors are put in, I'm just going to select the joystick, select the polygons, and then I'm gonna make sure that they get centered. So I can hit uh, center geo and X and Z, and then that'll make sure that it's centered on that act on both those axes. Cool. Okay. 
Yours might already be centered. You might be ahead of the game. No, because I gotta go back and do a twenty sided. <laughs> You'll get there. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna select that base plate again. Mm -hmm. um, and so if this was like a real joystick, I'm imagining that like this piece is actually gonna come down and be like rounded out and there's gonna be like a ball joint or something in here, right? Um, yeah. And so for space for that to happen, this needs to actually come out a bit. So I'm gonna select that inner edge line. Um, actually, I guess it's mirrored right now, so I can't really just select it and move it. Um, so I could select these pieces. Yeah, so I'll select these these inner pieces here. So I gotta mm -hmm. select the base mesh first to work on this, right? And then I'll I'll turn on my scale, and we'll notice that the scale is like not. If I scale it from here, it's not gonna do what I want it to do. But right. if I switch my um, my action center over to origin, then I can scale up from the origin, and it'll bring it out to where I want. Um, and the only issue with this, so I'm gonna bring it out just a bit, like there. Um, and the issue with this is that it's starting to pull away at this edge here. Um, and I can see that happening, so I can just fix that right now while, while I'm sitting here looking at it. So I'll select that edge, and then I'll turn on my scale. So I'm selecting this edge that's pulling away down here. Um, and then I'll scale that in to where it meets up with the x-axis perfectly. And I can do that because it's on the origin, right? Uh, this one looks fine, so I'm just going to go ahead and drop that and go back up to the top of my mesh stack, my mesh op stack. So we've got this nice flat set of polygons with the four circles on either side. Um, from here, we can do a thicken mesh op. I'm going to add that to it and pull that up to give it some nice thickness. I'm going to do this um, just so I can get the practice of doing it. Cool, cool. Um, Shift, and I'm gonna scale that around the origin. What's our? Um, I don't have my PDF in front of me. The uh, action centers. Oh, action centers is uh, that is Shift Alt Six. Shift Alt Six. I wouldn't pull it out too far. I'd probably pull it in just a little bit more than that, just so you're not overcrowding your polygons. Okay. Not inner edge. Okay. Yeah, I think that's good. All right. Cool. Uh, so now go ahead and throw a thicken on top of all that, a thicken mesh out. And we could potentially like harden the outer edges and stuff for this, but I've got another trick that I like, and that's throwing that polygon bevel with the select Wait. my previous. Thicken, do you thicken, thicken as mesh a... Up. I do. It's You have to hold Alt to get the mesh ops, though. Yeah, but which one? I forget what the symbol is, because I have a hotkey for... It's the... Far, right yep, right there. See how the, the icon looks like it's thickening those polygons? Got it, yeah. Alright, and that can just be whatever we can adjust it later. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, that's so, fair. Nice. So if you wanted to see what this was like in Sub-D, you could either select the base mesh and switch it over to Sub-D, or you could add a Sub-D modifier on top of this by doing a, um, a set polygon type. What's the advantage? Uh, so the advantage is the sub the setting the the polygon type at the end 
will just make it so that it's always like that, whereas the other way you have to rely on making sure that your base mesh is set to sub D before you like export it or freeze it or whatever. So it's just it's just two ways of getting there, really. Um, the mesh shop might take more computer power. It might make things more likely to crash. I, I don't know. I know I crash a lot when using mesh shops, so um, sometimes I opt for doing less mesh shops than I need to. Um, looks like you need to make sure that your both your mirrors have freeze on, or not freeze but merge, because you've got a piece missing. Oh, right, right, right. Both mirrors should have merge vertices on and should have uh, some sort of distance on that to make sure that they snap together. Make sure you're saving too. Saving your scene. Because like I said, mesh ops can be volatile. Volatile! Yeah. Um, your generator, or right now. To give it some distance, you say? Yeah. Okay. What, what'd you set it to? I can't tell. Oh, uh, one centimeter. Oh, one centimeter, that's quite a bit. That might be overkill, but it's fine. I do like five. I do like one millimeter at most, usually. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, Alright. Cool. And then, so if you go to the top of your stack, is that still, it's still looking a little funky, right? So select the bottom, whichever other mirror you had. Select the uh -huh. other mirror, and let's see what those settings are. Uh, where do you want me to start? Mirror generator? Just a uh, clone effector. Uh, mine are the same as yours. Yep. Okay, okay. Oh, wait, no, no, mine's set to polygon instead of vertex. Shouldn't be a big deal either way. What's, what do you have, what's the mesh up under that? Thicken. Ah, your thicken should be at the top of your stack, that's why. There you go. Ah, okay. So, make sure that both those mirrors are on. Uh, one of them is set to the wrong axis now. I can tell that from looking. So one should be X and one should be Z. The order doesn't matter as long as those are both below the thicken. Uh, this one's X and this one's Z. I know, it just disappeared. And then you click the top. So which one's which one's uh, Z? Z is the top one. And what's that? What's the merge vertice distance set to on that? One millimeter. And what's the selection type? Polygon. Set it to vertex. Okay. Good. And did jack all? Jack all. That's interesting. Uh, all right, go to the top of your mesh stack. That shouldn't be happening. Something is funky there. All right. Um, so something's going on with your hard edges. I can tell that from looking. So select all of your heart, all of your edges, like this. Okay. And then make sure that they're set to zero. You can do that in the Xterra weights. Zero. You need to be in base mode. Okay. So your base looks like this, right? Yep. And then, so go up to your next mirror. Let's let's try and let's try and figure this out one step at a time. So turn off the things above it. Turn off the mirror above that and the thicken above it. Okay. So, is that mirror on right now? Oh, is there? Is what? This geometry right here is that an issue? It might be. Looks that kind of something about that looks weird to me. Okay, so here's what you should do: switch over to vertex mode. Okay. And then turn on your merge vertices tool. Uh, for me, that's Shift Four. Did this down at the bottom. Turn that on. Click in the viewport and um, 
drag it until those merge themselves together. I think I have that here, so I gotta go dig for it. So uh, it should be right here, right next to the diagonal redirect and tear. You gotta make sure you're on the base geometry. Got it. Okay. And then are you on vertex mode? Because you should be in vertex mode. There you go. Now click in the viewport with that on. And drag until those merge together. Because, yeah, you've got some funky geometry going on. Okay. Are they merging? I'm not seeing anything. Okay. You can open your tool properties and see what your distance is at. And if it looks like it should be merging and it's not, then we've got other problems we need to figure out. Uh... The tool properties keeps disappearing. What's it set to? Uh, 4.8 millimeters right now. And, it's... and it looks like everything's good. Okay, so go ahead and drop that. Okay. Um, okay, so now let's turn on the next, the, the mirror above that, or just select the mirror above it and see what that mirror looks like. So that's not doing anything. So there's a yeah. problem there. Something is happening. You want to turn it off and turn it back on and see if that might fix it. Because it should it should mirror across that x axis. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've got enable vertex mode, merge vertices, mirror generator set to x. Oh, uh, you know what? I think I know what it is. Open it up and go into selection. Oh. I had a polygon selected. You had something selected. So X okay. out of that selection so that it just has add selection. So there's no selection, if there's no selection, then there's then everything is yeah. selected. Right? Nice. Okay. What's that say? I can't read it. That's fine. It says this, this item has no more um, nothing connected to it. Would you like to delete it? Cool. So I said yes. Perfect. So now you can turn on the next mirror in line, and we might as well check it and make sure it doesn't have any selection stuff on it. Oh, now it's, it's thickening and everything. Okay. Yeah, I'll check the other one now. Yeah, there we go. Hunt, yeah, that's hunting good. down the problems. No, that was it, because we've had that, like, you've drilled that into me now, so, like, that's usually the first place I. Yeah. I will start to dig. Okay. Uh, so Sweet. now we're at the top of our thicken, or our top of our stack, and the last thing we have is the nice thicken on there. Mm -hmm. um, so now I'm going to add a polygon bevel to this mesh shop polygon bevel. I'm going to open it up, go to selection. Do you are you on the? Okay, yeah, you should be on that. I think it might be on the wrong piece. Maybe. Uh no? Okay. Oh, yeah. add polygon bevel to... The base. To the base. Yeah, on okay. top of the thicken. So after the thicken, we do a polygon bevel. So we can get nice, hard, crisp edges. So would I... Just by just so I know, where would I have my highlights to get that to happen automatically? You don't. Have nothing selected yet. Okay. Just say add operator? Yeah. Add polygon bevel. Because we're going to use a selection like driver to do it instead of an actual like polygon selection. Okay. Cool. So now you can open that up and look at your selection and hit add selection. And then you need to make sure you're on new over in this window. Mm -hmm. And then at the bottom of that, there should be a select by previous. At the very bottom. Okay. Click on, double click on that, to get it added. And then inside there, you want to select uh, on the source item, thicken two, or whatever thicken you've got. Uh, I've got mine is thicken two, but yours might be thicken one. Um, so make sure it's that thicken that you've got on that mesh. And then the name, you want to be on sides. And so now you can see that that's procedurally generating that selection for us, which is exactly what we want. So now if we click the polygon bevel, uh, the actual mesh shop itself, we can bring that bevel in a little bit 
or we can you know we can adjust it here I like to bring it in just a little bit so that on the actual model if it's not sub D it's not sitting right on top of itself so I like just bring it in like a little bit the bevel itself the red uh, box yeah and then go ahead and save Okay, so that's just basically adding a hold edge for us. Yep. Yeah. yeah, specifically that is what it's doing. Cool. Uh, so we're getting pretty close. This model's getting uh, getting there. Um, for this piece that we can we can finish out this mesh item by selecting this circle of polygons here. Mm -hmm. And then we can add another polygon bevel. And we could drag this up. And honestly, I think that would be fine. Um, dragging it up just a little bit, like so, that that matches our 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 look pretty well. But if we wanted to, we could grab that and um, grab the additional edges that we create after that. These ones, and we could bevel them too with an edge bevel, so that we've got more control over what that looks like instead of it just being that sub D curve, um, which is fine for a lot of things. Um, but if you wanted to have a nice round bevel on it once you got there, you could then add another, like an edge bevel on top of mm -hmm. this with those selected. So are you selecting this from the base mesh or from the... From the from the top of the stack. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're good. Go ahead and add your next bevel. Do I have polygon be or You should bevel. if you hold alt. It should be... Uh, third row down or second row down on the modeling tools, and then over to the right. Oh, that guy. Yep. There you go. Oh, that's push. Oh, is that push? My bad. No Boom. Alt. Ah, oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, I got that one. All right. Um, and then, so I had nothing selected, so I'm going to go in there and I'm going to uh, go to selection. Uh, n okay. No, for the polygon bevel there, you should have had that ring of polygons selected because we. Can't oh, it looks like I did select it. Okay, so now if you drag it up, there you go. I do have some weird. You still got some now. weird hard edges or something going on. Yeah. Did you make sure to zero out all of your edges on your base mesh? Yeah. Let's go back and. Select all the edges, not not polygons, but edges. You can just be in edge mode. You don't actually have to manually select them. Just as long as you're okay. in edge mode with nothing selected, they're all selected. Zero. Make sure you save too, because <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So save save your scene now, just to make sure. Okay. Cool. And so now you go to the top of the stack, and how's it look? Nice. So you That's can, what I did, is I zeroed it out in polygon mode instead of edge mode. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Okay. okay. Oh, so oh. you can pull that up a little bit more, probably. Um, we could try and do this edge selection for the next bevel with a, with a like selection algorithm like we did with the previous selection thing. Um, but I think it's going to be the last thing that the last mesh op we actually put on this base. So like I'm not super worried about it conflicting with other stuff if we do another selection, like manual selection. So okay. I'm going to select these edges here on the outside, and then I'm going to add an edge bevel up, and then I'll drag that in a little bit, and I'll set the round level to maybe two that down so that it's nice maybe maybe two is a bit much maybe I'll do one just so that it's not super dense and kind of adjust it so now it looks like that so that's pretty good so let's go just the rings not the not that piece but the long ring that goes all the way around yep and then the inner one bevel, or edge bevel. Don't think I have that over here. Yeah. 
think you're right. No edge bubble yet. It's not something we use every day. I mean, I use it a lot, but I use it. I use the actual edge bevel tool, not the mesh hop edge edge bevel tool that much. What are you doing? Oh, are you searching for it? Cool. Edge. Oh, it is edge bevel, not edge bevel hop. That is the hop. Okay. Yep. Boom. Yeah. So All right. Able to Our drag selection that blue down a little bit, and you'll probably want to add to the round level. Probably. Round it up to one. Uh, the up and the down doesn't. No, it doesn't work on mesh ops. Okay. Lighter in. Oh, round level, there it is. You had yours set to one, I think, right? Yep. <coughs> that red one that you've got, so that you're touching right now, that's the miter level, that's not the bevel level. So okay. if you look, your mitering offset is probably set to not zero now. So set that mitering offset to zero. Yep. And then yep. you'll want to actually adjust the bevel, the blue one. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, does that work? Nice. Yep. Cool. All right. So that piece. Uh, that mounting piece is pretty much done. Now we just gotta set up our, our hex bolts. So I'm gonna select the hex bolt and I'm going to add a mirror up and that's gonna mirror it across there and then I'm gonna add another mirror up and for the second mirror up I'm gonna go into mirror generator and set that to Z. And now it's mirrored across there. Is there any reason you don't hook it up to the one that we already made? Because the one that we already made has merge vertices on, and it can ah, it can interfere okay. with stuff. It, oh, that's what that's what happened the first time you did it, right? Yep, yep. Where I was getting like weird funkiness going on. Yeah. Yep. So they'll get their own mirrors, and it's not a big deal. It's not. <sighs> um. Cool. So now we've just got this joystick to finish. So I'll select the joystick, I'll double click on the open edge on the bottom, I'm going to hit Z, and then I'm just going to scale it out with R, and then I'm going to double click the um, edge on the inside, and I'm going to hit B and bevel that, give it a nice roundness, like so. Just adjusting the count and the, the range until I'm happy with it. And I am happy with it. It's pretty good. So... So I had deleted that inner polygon, so you can just delete that. And then select the edge that made up the outer edge of that polygon. Just the one. You're hovering over too much stuff. There you go. Hit Z. Click in the viewport. Yep. Now hit and then R. Yep. R for scale. R. I have to scale. drop the tool and then hit R, where it does that weird thing. I don't know why. That's interesting. I think you can you can actually change that in the tool settings for it. That's what I've done. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, scale scale it all the way out so that it goes past that inner piece there, because we want it to just look like it's suction fit on there, right? Like it's that's a dust cover or whatever. Yeah. Or holding it in place. And so then you can just select that inner hard edge, just the edge itself, not the polygons, and bevel mm -hmm. that until your heart's content and it looks nice. Ah, oh, but this is a hard edge and it needs to be, so I need to zero this. Yep. Right. Done. Nice. So that is how you model a joystick. 
And the nice part about this is uh, it's mod, you know, it's it's um, mesh up. So if you wanted to adjust this bevel height or whatever in your final design, you could do that. Um, but also, you could like unwrap this hex bolt. So you can unwrap this single hex bolt by grabbing it, going to base mesh, going into UVs, and then unwrapping it, and giving it a nice relax, and then fitting it so it's nice, fits up all the space. But then that mirrors across the whole thing. So if you, you know, put a normal map on it, it mirrors across all the others. You put a, you know, nice polished metal on it or whatever, it mirrors across to the others. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, you could also unwrap this with mesh shops if you really wanted to get uh, get fancy with it, right? So you could select. Um, you could select the polygons that you'd want to unwrap. So if I'm looking at this, it would be like here, here, all the way around. It's all been selected. I'm going to turn off everything else so I can see. Um, double select this around there, and then you just need to give it some edges to hold on to when it's. Uh, oh, you also need to do the inner circles too. So, inner circles, same thing. The only problem with unwrapping it um, with mesh ops is that if you do, if like you could arrange, you could change the the mesh ops to your heart's content as long as it didn't add or remove geometry. So like you could push this bevel up higher or lower. You can make the thicken higher or lower. But if you said like add more sides to the thicken or add more bevel, you know, more round the level, to, then it'll break this. Um, which is unfortunate, but it happens. So then you just need to make sure that you have some edges selected that cut up these long strips that we've got. Like so. Do them all. Select these middle ones like so. And then if I were to add an unwrap mesh up on here, unwrap and relax actually because that just kills two birds with one stone you know um, then it'll unwrap all this real nice not not super nice this one looks, <laughs> this one looks a little not nice not, you know decent nice barely uh, used refurbished I can up the iterations a bit if I want kind of adjust this stuff so I'll put that up to like 500 iterations and then set the iterations for the um relax up to like 500 and so these have unwrapped decently maybe I'll turn this back down a little bit eh, no. 500 was good um, and then boundary I could maybe try straighten see if that straightens out and didn't really straighten that stuff out um, so I'll just go back to smooth, and then what I'll end up doing um, as the last bit of this unwrap is I'll select all of these, and then I'll add a UV rectangle mesh up on top. Yep. It'll make all those rectangles, and then the last thing I'll do is a pack. UV pack! And so now it's pretty well unwrapped, right? So I'll go ahead and save this. Now, what is the advantage of doing that, though? Because, like, you're going to have to redo it if you change geometry anyway, right? Yeah, the the advantage to this is that if you don't change your geometry and you go to freeze this for your final mesh, you've already got all your UV islands and everything. Uh -huh. So, like, it didn't take us more than a minute to set that up, right? Like, even with all the selection that we did. So, like, it can be pretty useful. Um, but... Basically, it's I use it just to make sure that I've got all my UV islands and I don't have to unwrap this thing manually later. 
Yeah. So it, it can be useful, but you don't have to do it. It's not imperative or anything like that. It's just sometimes it can be a little useful. I feel like it might actually be pretty good for when something's sub D. Yeah. Because if you freeze that, then it turns into a lot of geometry that you have to go find seams for and, yeah. and unwrap. So then I'm just going to select yeah. this joystick and I'm going to unwrap it too. So I'll select that, that, and then I'll just pick a random edge. You know, I like Sometimes I like keeping my edges on origins, so I'll put this down to Z origin since it's easy. And then I'll hit unwrap. So like this rectangle. rectangle. Clock it. Relax this a little bit. And like you, we could do a little bit better with this unwrap. See how it's like red it means it's like distorted on the top. Um, so we could try and relax it to where it's less red. Um, maybe switch it over to like angle based or conformal. But they may or may not actually give you better results. Yeah, I think the best one we had was adaptive. So, I think that's fine, honestly, for what we're doing. So, I'm going to leave it at that. And then, the last step for this piece is I'm going to group all of these together. I'm going to call this joystick mop modeling. I'm going to make a new mesh. I'm going to add a merge mesh to this. So now I've got a merge mesh on here. And I can select in that merge mesh. I could either do this in the schematic view or I could just open up sources and add the sources one at a time. So joystick. OK, wait, hold on. Let me catch up real quick. And hex bolt. Uh, so joystick, hex bolt, dick. Okay, mounting plate. Okay, so these three need to. I need to put in a locator, and you call that mop. Yeah, I just call it joystick, joystick mop yeah. modeling, so I know what it is. Control G, enter, and then I'm gonna name that joystick mop merge. And if you were like doing a whole bunch of this stuff, like for a tractor or for something else, mm -hmm. you could even like color code this stuff if you really wanted to. Like, yeah, we did you know, that. I remember could make this, like these three magenta, and this one red, and we kind of get that like these feed into that or something. Um, and then after the merge, so I've got these merged on here, right? The last thing that I could do is I could actually run another. Um, another pack, pack UVs, and then it packs them all together. So then if I wanted to use this, um, I could just hit duplicate and freeze, and I get a frozen version of it that's just good to go. And if I ever wanted to like do a new one or whatever, I could go and adjust those mesh ops. But now the one that I'm actually like moving around is just frozen. It's fully modeled and it's, it's good to go. And with it now being frozen, it means that I can take it and I can put it inside my presets. I can just use it forever. But to make that into a merge mesh, first I need to create a new mesh, correct? Yep. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to create, and I'm going to keep that in the joystick mop? Yeah, yeah, you might as well. And I then just, I, I normally drag the final, like, frozen, duplicated and frozen one out of that folder. Um, but I keep everything else in that folder. Do I have merge mesh in my... Yeah, I've got it somewhere. Merge mesh, there it is. Boom. Okay. Uh, and then call that uh, joystick in the And then, but I need to hook this up, so I'm going over here in the schematic view, and I'm going to add the, wait, uh, 
selected, add, selected, okay, joystick merge mesh, um, and then add these other three meshes, add selected as well. Except, do I have to add, I can't remember, I do have to add all of their mesh shops, right, manually? To the merge mesh? No. I mean, I mean to the schematic. No. I mean, okay. you can if you want to edit them in there, but you also do not have to go through the schematic view to do what I just did. You can okay. you can just do it through the mesh shops, through the little mesh shop side menu by going into your merge mesh and going to sources and then selecting those three, those three meshes that we did: joystick, joystick mounting plate, and hex bolt. Oh, okay. Just type in the. Yep. Do I have to do them one at a time now, right? Yeah. I gotta pee. I'll be right back. Go for it, dude. No problem. All right. I am going to pop this in. Yeah. Okay. All right, dude. I've got to. Uh, I gotta go to bed. That's fair. But uh, I appreciate yeah. this. Is it's been very. Cool. It was a good little bit of practice, right? Yeah, this is great. I mean, this is like kicking off my. Uh, Sabbatical. <laughs> gonna call it that. Yeah. Cool. cool. Well, uh, if you if you want to do something tomorrow, hit me up. I might uh, I might be available. I might not. I don't know. Just hit me up. Okay, we'll do. Cool. Talk to you later, man. Can't wait to see uh, the rest of the model. All right, man. I'll see you definitely, tomorrow. Definitely, definitely shoot me uh, your final whatever you make your final model of this. Um, yeah, I don't know. I may try. I may try another iteration of it um, with another body type. Um, That'd be cool. But this is definitely. This gives Hannah something at least to demo in substance. Yeah. Oh man, I finally got my Liger in substance. I'm excited. Except it wouldn't freaking save for some reason. So I did some work on it last night. I baked a bunch of maps, and then it wouldn't save. And it was like, this is unusual. And I'm like, yeah. I think. <laughs> <Don't fucking laughs> shit, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but you could demo just this you could freaking I mean here actually I'll just I'll do that real quick let me let's let me show you some stuff real quick if you got five minutes all right I got five minutes it's okay if you don't got, have five minutes I have to get this I gotta get this um, while you're doing that I'm gonna be trying to export this to so I can because um, Hannah's in England so 
I gotta get this before I go to bed because she's waking up pretty soon. Ah, uh, so I'm gonna call this one low and then I'm gonna duplicate it. Um, I'll unsub D that one and then I'll go down to this one, which I'll call high. And then I'll say geometry, freeze, faces, and it'll freeze all that stuff down. And now I can take the high and export it as an OBJ. And I'm just going to throw it on my desktop real quick. Call this joystick underscore high. And do this one, call it, export it. Joystick underscore low. And open up Substance Painter. If this was broken into multiple meshes, you could put the high low on um, all of your mesh items. So, like, this would be like hex bolt low, and this would be mounting plate low, and this would be joystick low. And then same for the high version. And it will bake them all independently. Um, but we don't need to do that right now, so it's fine. <laughs> like 2048, select the mesh, desktop, low, okay. Uh, okay, you're about to ship the that, aren't you? Base meshes, add, high, bake selected. And it bakes it real nice, except uh, it's like low, low resolution map and whatnot. <laughs> let's bake it. Let's bake it slightly higher than that. Let's go twenty forty eight. Bake selected. I think there's a little bit too much difference between our low poly and our high poly silhouette for this joystick, um, so it's given us some hard angles here. Um, but that's the basic substance workflow. It's like once you get that stuff matched up decently, then you just do this, you bake it out nice. Cobalt, place that there, layer, mask, color combo, pick color. Dude, when I try to mirror this thing, it shits the bed. I think there, I need to save. When you try to mirror it? Uh, what do you mean? Yeah, well, I'm just mirroring. I mean, this is just a, this is a merged mesh, and I'm just, uh, I'm, so, I mean, a frozen mesh, right? And shift B, mirror X. And it does that. Yeah, it puts it on top of itself. No, like, it, look at it. It's, I can't see. you got to zoom in on it. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. It's it's trying to mirror it directly on top of itself is what's happening. And it's oh. merging those polygons there. Um, so, select it in. So, un undo that. And then, um, just in item mode. Switch over to item mode. Uh, do I need to zero that out? You might, but you could also just drop a mesh op uh, mirror on here. You could hold Alt and click on the mesh op mirror. Is that good? Weird though. The action center must be moved. Yeah. Just look at, look where it lands it. Yeah, that's weird. So, for go to your base mesh, select the base mesh. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, hold. So select the the top item object item. Hold Control while you select the base mesh so that you keep both selected. Uh -huh. And then go to freeze. Okay. All. There you go. Okay. Yeah, that works. What's that in the middle? Huh? What's that thing in the middle? Oh, uh, that's I started making a toggle switch. Oh, okay. I was like, that's weird. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. 
All right, cool. I should just freeze this then, and then just... How do I send an FBX of just... Is there an export selected? Uh, yeah. Is yeah, that what, how you would do that? Yeah, you could do that. You just select the item that you want in the, the thing here. Right-click, export selected layers. Oh, okay. Okay. Because I'm guessing if I sent you, like, a mesh op and you open that as an FBX, you're going to get every one of those meshes on top of each other. You're going to get Jack Diddly. It doesn't understand mesh ops. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> you got to freeze them before you send them. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right, man. Talk to you later. Have a good night. Yeah. You too, man. Sleep well. Or you're going to be up for like four more hours. So. Yeah, who knows? That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.